I'd like to highlight some recent scientific findings that I think are going to be interesting and actionable for many of you out there. Neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to change in response to experience. In fact, neuroplasticity underlies all forms of learning, whether or not it's language learning or learning music or math or a physical skill. All forms of learning involve the reorganization of connections in the nervous system, the brain and spinal cord and body. One of the key principles of neuroplasticity is this notion of making errors as a good thing toward neuroplasticity. This is a little bit counterintuitive, but what the scientific literature tells us is that whenever we're trying to learn something new, if we make an error, we know it feels frustrating, but that state of frustration actually cues up particular brain areas to be more alert so that on subsequent attempts to learn that thing, we have a heightened level of focus and a higher probability of learning the new skill, regardless of what that skill is. And I've talked about this before in various episodes as encouraging people to embrace errors or pursue errors, not as their own end goal, but errors as an entry point for making the brain more plastic. And if you think about it, it really makes sense. Why would the brain change at all if it's performing everything perfectly? When you make errors, well, in the immediate seconds and minutes after those errors, you are in a better position to learn. A common question I get, however, is what should be the rate of errors, which is really just a way of saying how hard should the given task be that you're trying to learn or perform. And it turns out there's an answer. There's a recent paper that was published in a great journal, Nature Communications. This is a paper, a last author, Jonathan Cohen. The paper is entitled The 85% Rule for Optimal Learning. Basically what this paper shows is that when trying to learn something new, you wanna make the difficulty of what you're trying to learn such that you're getting things right about 85% of the time, that you're making errors about 15% of the time. And the reason I like this paper is it really points specifically to some protocols that we can implement because people always say, okay, you want to set a high goal. You want to try and achieve something that's really lofty, but you don't want to make the goal so lofty that you don't make any progress at all. Other people say you really want to start with really small goals and make things very, very incremental, only set out to do things that you know you can accomplish and that will feed back on your self-esteem and all these positive feedback loops. And then, you know, layer by layer, layer by layer, you'll eventually get where you want to go. Well, it turns out that neither is true. You need to set the level of difficulty such that you're making errors about 15% of the time. And I want to emphasize about 15% of the time because... There's no way to configure protocols for sport or language or math or anything else where you're going to have exactly 15% of errors. So this paper, the 85% rule for optimal learning, it really points to the idea of making things pretty hard, but not so hard that you're failing every attempt or even half of the attempts. Failing about 15% of the time seems optimal for learning. Hopefully that information will be useful to any of you that are trying to learn something. Hopefully it will also be useful to those of you that are teaching kids or other adults. If you're teaching, keep in mind that you want to keep the students reaching for higher and higher levels of proficiency in whatever that is that you're teaching and that 15% of the time they should be failing. If it gets to 20%, that's probably okay. If they start failing about half the time, then probably what they're trying to learn is too difficult for them at that point. Now, of course, this is going to be controlled by all sorts of external factors, like whether or not they slept well the night before, whether or not you slept well the night before and you're being clear in your instructions uh, to them, et cetera. But I think the 15% rule, as we may call it, is a good metric to aim for, and it can serve both students and teachers. In other words, it can serve both those teaching and those that are learning. 